What is going on, baseball fans? Jeremy Latacuente here for the Baseball Banter Broadcast. And on this broadcast, we're going to be bantering about the most interesting storyline of the offseason, Carlos Correa. So before we get into it, let me know your thoughts on Carlos Correa down in the comments below. Let me know your feelings about everything that has happened with him this offseason and what your projections are for him in 2023 and beyond. Let me know that down in the comments. But as we look at what has happened with Carlos Correa, and we have a corresponding up uh, article up on LaRaCuenteLedger.com. Links to that article will be down in the show notes below. But when you look at the way this offseason played out for Carlos Correa, opting out of his deal with the Minnesota Twins to begin the offseason, then from there, there was a lot of talk, a lot of conversation, a lot of banter about different places he could end up. Carlos has been the most written about person that we have had on LaRaCuenteLedger.com. Like literally the most articles by any about any one individual player have been about Carlos Correa this offseason. There's been about five or six articles that we've put together on LaRaCuenteLedger.com about this whole situation, about Carlos Correa, his signing with the Giants, a absolutely insane contract, 13 years, uh, I believe was that initial deal, $350 million. Then the physical didn't pan out. And usually, whenever you hear these things where the physical was kind of a, a bit of a hindrance, the team and the player and his agents would kind of renegotiate things, kind of uh, add in some different clauses and stipulations, and they would figure it out. That didn't happen. Then it looked and seemed as if the Giants were the party at fault, that they were finding things or kind of making things up that weren't there in order to kind of save themselves from this big humongous contract then fast forward you have the most aggressive team in terms of owner and his willingness to spend financially the new york mets that jumped in on the bidding for carlos correa they would then sign him to a uh, i believe 12 year 315 million dollar deal absolutely insane kind of just picking the bones of the san francisco giants and and their or whole ordeal of not being able to sign Correa, or so it seemed. Then we got, once again, to the physicals. And again, the Mets would question Correa's physicals, his ability to hold up over the terms of the contract. There was a very long, silent period when the word was announced that the Mets also had their reservations about Correa's physical. And it felt as if the longer that there was silence between the two parties, the more likely that this deal was not going to happen, especially not in its present iteration. Now, what complicated issues with the Mets was that Steve Cohen did the absolute, you know, bugaboo, the no-no of discussing a deal before it was truly finalized. And that could have penalized the Mets and Steve Cohen financially if Scott Boris and Carlos Correa, Scott Boris being Correa's agent, decided they wanted to kind of maintain that deal. And they likely would have been awarded that if they had gone to an independent arbitrator to deal with kind of the ramifications of that being spoken about publicly. But for both Boris, the Mets, and the, you know, Correa party, it didn't have to come to that because the twins would then swoop in and sign him. Six years, $200 million. Obviously, there's some different things and, and clauses in there that, that could hump the deal back up towards what the twins initially offered Correa uh, this offseason of 10 years and $285 million. But the simple fact is, is that this has been one of the most intriguing storylines to follow this offseason now the physicals for correa and the twins seemingly panned out perfectly uh there was a, a meme that i saw online that had uh said the twins medical staff uh looking at correa's physicals and it was a picture of stevie wonder and ray charles make of that what you will but when you look at this whole situation, Carlos Correa is still an elite superstar player. There's no doubt about it. That's why three different teams wanted to sign him this offseason. 
There are, however, serious concerns about how long is Correa going to be able to stand up. In our article that we posted uh, yesterday on LaRaCuentaLedger.com about this whole situation, Carlos Correa saga complete uh, is complete. Michael K, uh, we note that in the article, Michael K on the Yes, uh, the Yankees Hot Stove show would discuss the fact that uh, someone in the Mets, you know, no, said to him that based on the physicals, Carlos Correa's ankle could either give out in spring training or 12 years from now. There's no way to know. And when you think about that, for a team that's investing, you know, over $300 million as the Giants and the Mets were willing and, and looking to do, you have to really question whether or not you're going to have stability from a player. As a Yankee fan, there's no question that we've seen our, our fair share of these things pan out and not pan out uh, subsequently. I, I think back to Jacoby Ellsbury, who was given a far bigger contract than he ever deserved. And the simple fact was, is that he was always hurt. And throughout the, the final years of his Yankee deal, they ended up just paying him to go away because he could upon. And... That's the question that you have to ask with Correa. Is this going to be a player that the Minnesota Twins can count on? Is this going to be a player that they're going to be able to, to kind of pencil in that production? Or is it going to be another case of not being able to put your superstar on the field because they're con Another thing that was stated by Michael K on that Yankees hot stove show about this Correa situation was the fact that the next surgery that Carlos Correa has on that right ankle will be the last for his playing career and it will just be about giving him a normal everyday life. That is a very scary proposition for a team that is investing hundreds of millions of dollars. This is why it is such an interesting turn and, and how things kind of played out for Correa and his you know team his family this off season but it is a curious thing as to to why the twins would even continue down that path now yes less money than the giants or the mets offered but it's still a lot of money 200 million dollars is no joke and yes it is for a lot less years than what both of the other teams were offering but at the same time the potential that you could be losing Correa one to two years into this deal is really something that you have to be curious about. And it will be interesting to watch how Correa plays during spring, how he plays during the WBC. As we know, he's playing 14 Puerto Rico. And it's going to be really interesting to me to see kind of how these next couple of seasons play out for Carlos Correa. In 100 years from now, when anyone looks at Carlos Correa's baseball reference page, it's going to say 2022 Minnesota Twins, 2023 Minnesota Twins, and so on and so forth. But those of us that lived through it know that this was one of the most interesting scenarios that we've ever seen play out during the offseason. And it will not be something that we forget about anytime soon. But I want to hear from you guys. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. As I said, let me know your thoughts on Carlos Correa. Twins fans, let me know how are you feeling about Correa coming back to your team. Uh, I believe this was a player that was needed. I do feel that the Twins are a better team with him on the squad than they would have been without. Uh, they're going to be battling the Guardians and the White Sox for the top of that division in 2023 with or without Correa. But they stand a much better chance, in my opinion, with Correa on the squad. So... Definitely want to hear from you guys. Let me know, baseball fans, down in the comment section below your thoughts on the whole situation, the whole ordeal, this entire offseason storyline with Carlos Correa. Uh, down in the comments, you can find me over on Twitter at banter underscore baseball. Now, if you've stuck around to this point, I want to bring your attention to something that we're going to be doing. We're going to be running a giveaway here for this thermos here, a baseball banter broadcast thermos. It is available on our merchandise shop baseballbanterbroadcast.com now we're going to be doing a giveaway once we hit 500 subscribers here on this youtube channel 
Now, the only way that you can win is you have to be a subscriber. Now, the way we're going to be running this, we're going to be doing a uh, kind of a lottery system and gain more entries to be able to win this thermos from the basement broadcast one of three ways. You gain extra entries by following us on our TikTok channel, Baseball Banter Broadcast, our Instagram page, Baseball Banter Broadcast, and our Twitter account, Banter underscore Baseball. So if you follow us on all three of those places, as well as being a subscriber here on YouTube, which is the main qualification, then you have four opportunities, four chances in the lottery that we're going to be running to determine the winner of the thermos so i want to thank you guys we're going to be doing that giveaway after we hit the 500 subscriber mark so make sure you tell all of your baseball friends that this is the channel to watch in 2023 and beyond and make sure you're following us on all of our social media channels to gain extra entries to be able to win the thermos but i want to thank you guys for tuning in keep it locked in all, all season long and all season long by hitting the subscribe button and the bell for post notifications each time we start to banter a new broadcast here on the Baseball Banter Broadcast. I'll catch you guys on the next video. Peace.